dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Construction season is starting up for road crews here in Eastern Kentucky. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details why some areas may see construction lights starting to pop up. <sighs> That's the reaction a lot of us may have when we see another construction light adding another stop to our daily routes. As road work season begins, crews are working to repair damages even from the July flood. So when normally we would have a little bit of a few embankment repairs, asphalt, different things like ditching and things, we would have those on a regular basis. Now those are kind of intensified. The Transportation Cabinet's 12th District covers a lot of areas hit by last summer's flood. Highway 15 and Route 7 are two roads under a spotlight. The extent of repairs varies between each road. They're filling in those um, banks that have essentially washed out from the flooding. You know, when the flood comes through, the water will uh, soil, it will erode those rocks and soil and things and really wash out those embankments. And sometimes we'll have to go in and what we call a soil nail repair. And that's really when we really have to close down the road on either side. We've got large things of equipment that come in. We've really got to drill steel and beams and things back into the rock to really get it solid. With added damage from the flood, Repairs could take longer, but Woodward says crews will go one stop at a time. We'll start in one place and we'll work our way to another. And so we'll work, we'll finish this one. And when this one finishes, we'll open that section, move to the next one, and then we'll close that section or we'll do one lane. Whether you're in Letcher or not counties or anywhere across the region, you may want to add a few minutes to your morning routine. In Knott County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Woodward also says crews rely on the public to observe signs as they're driving in places where workers may not be able to see very far. Soggy weather continues across the mountains on your Sunday as widespread rainfall is likely into this evening. Here is a look at First Alert Pinpoint Doppler. As you can see, showers continue across the region at this hour. Some heavier rainfall now over portions of Wise County, Virginia, also into Dickinson and Buchanan County as well. Some light to moderate rainfall near Pikeville and Pike County. Also watching out for some showers now over portions of Knott County near Hindman. So some heavier showers are possible. No severe weather, but this soggy weather will continue into the rest of your evening. Here's a live look from Buffalo Mountain. As you can see, visibility very low as showers and fog continue over at Buffalo Mountain. That current temperature 54 degrees. And most of us in those 50s right now, 54 in Hazard, 55 in Jackson, 56 over in London. So well below average, and that will continue as we go into tonight as well. More showers are possible and those overnight lows falling into the lower 50s as you wake up on Monday. But Keaton, some summer heat is on the way. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Cameron. A former firefighter died in a rollover crash on Friday in Tazewell, Tennessee. The car was found flipped on its top with multiple people inside. Four fire departments were called to the scene to help move the passengers to a hospital. A firefighter on leave of absence died in the wreck. Officials have not yet released their name. Numerous Johnson Countyans are mourning the loss of someone who was a pillar of their community. 65 year old Tina Webb of Hager Hill died yesterday after battling cancer for several months. Webb was most known for her community involvement, serving as a board member for the Kentucky Apple Festival and as the Van Leer Historical Society Coal Miners Museum director for 20 years. Oh my goodness, like I want to be remembered just like her. And um, I'm pretty sure that I won't be as amazing as her. And I told her, I said, Mom, I said, don't worry about it. I said, we'll make sure that building don't, like it's gonna run. You know, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep the tour groups coming in. Webb's visitation is taking place right now at the Phelps and Son Funeral Home in Paintsville, followed by a second visitation there tomorrow. Webb will have an additional visitation on Tuesday at the U.S. 23 Country Music Highway Museum in Staffordsville, where her funeral will also be held afterwards. We've got those details of her visitation and funeral services on our website, WYMT.com. A group of Scott County veterans spent their Sunday visiting cemeteries. 
Stephen Delk is a Navy veteran and second vice commander of American Legion Post 24. He and many others are devoting their Sunday to honoring their fellow veterans who have given their lives for our country. Post 24 is visiting seven different cemeteries today, performing a 21 gun salute, a rendition of taps, and they read the names of fallen veterans at each cemetery. We do get a good number of family members that come and just want to hear their family member's name read. And uh, again, it's our honor to do that. We also addemned a few of those sectari uh, cemeteries with some other smaller cemeteries that are local to those cemeteries. So it's a total of about 11 or 12 cemeteries names get named. The Post dedicated part of their ceremony to their brother and eight-year veteran, Scott County Sheriff Deputy Caleb Conley. He served with the U.S. Army for eight years before serving the Scott County Sheriff's Office for four years. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break.